And so it's important that in market per steer projects as well as our breeding beef heifer projects or even our commercial projects that we administer injections according to beef quality assurance procedures. It was established many years ago that we move our injections, our intramuscular injections and all of our injections, we move them from the rump of the animal. We oftentimes gave our intramuscular injections our injections in the muscle back here in the top of their, their rear there in their uh, sirloin. We also gave injections back here in the round. And the reason we gave those injections here and we gave them here because we got a good muscle here and we've got a good muscle here and it's very convenient. It's very easy. If you've got them in a chute, those are two big easy targets that we can give those injections. Uh, however, when we think about a meat quality standpoint, we get some whole muscle cuts that come out of here and out of here. Anytime we give an inje animal an injection, whether it's a antibiotic or a vaccine or, or even if we just put a saline solution in there, or even if we just went into that animal with a needle, we're going to do damage. And I like to relate it to, as, as us, as humans, whenever we get a, an injection, we get a shot whether it's for the flu vaccine or, or just an antibiotic, when that needle goes in and they give that product, it's sore for a period of time. And the reason it's sore for a period of time because the muscle damage, whether it was in the rear or whether it was in the arm, there was damage to that muscle. And so that's the, 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 the healing process begins. And so anytime we go into the muscle on these animals, we potentially damage the muscle. The product is gone. Any kind of antibiotic residue is gone by the time that, that, that uh, animal is harvested, but we do some damage and we can get some scar tissue and affect tenderness and quality of the product. And so we've moved our injections from the rear of the animal, and the recommendation is for all intramuscular injections to move them into the neck of the animal. And if we, from a show project or a beef project, we always recommend giving those injections on the off side of the animal, so the non-show side of the animal. So that would be this side of the animal. Uh, and the reason for that is because the judge spends the least amount of time on this side of your project looking at it. So in case we had some kind of knot or something, the judge is likely not going to see it on this side where he would on the other side. So I always put those injections on the off side of the animal, on the off side of the neck. And if you'll notice this particular steer, they've given him injection, probably a, a subcutaneous clostridial injection. And there's a little bit of a knot right there, and those things just happen during the injection process. Uh, likelihood over time that knot will, will, will fade away. and By the time he's at his market steer show, you won't even notice it. But we put those injections, subcutaneous injections, or intramuscular injections, we like to, to draw some lines. And if we take a line from the point of the shoulder, and we come up to the base of the ear, and we stop about three or four inches from the base of the ear, okay? That line right there would be essentially his neck bone. So you don't want to give injections right there. But if we come up, okay, so we've got our line there, and that's our neck bone. So we don't want to give any injections there. We don't want to come and give injections here because we've got a jugular vein right here, and we don't want to hit that. But above this area, there's some good deep muscle tissue right here. Now we, if we make a mark about a hand's width behind the base of the ear, from here back, is good muscle tissue right in there. Right here, okay, from here above, there's a ligament that runs into here. And so an easy spot to give an injection would be kind of in the top of that neck if they were in a chute. But there's a ligament that runs through here, and you potentially could damage that ligament or cause a knot on top of here, which would be unsightly. But if you're given a vaccine or some other low-dose product and it, it got in somewhere into that tissue where the ligament is, the absorption's probably not as good. It may not be as effective in there. So if you'll drop down several inches from the top of that neck, and so now we've got a big red meat muscle tissue right here. 
if we take, early on recommendations were just in front of the shoulder, but actually we want to move several inches in front of that shoulder, about a hand's width. And so if we've got this triangle area here, this is kind of an ideal place to give our intramuscular injections. The reason we give them here, in this area, yeah, we can do some tissue damage there, but that's all trim. And so if there was a, some scar tissue there, it could be trimmed out. And most of this product's going to go to trim or to grind or something like that. So we're not going to really be affecting a stake. But keep it about a hand's width in front of the shoulder, about a hand's width behind the ear, above the neck bone, and below this ligament, and that's where your intramuscular injections will be. For subcutaneous injections, this is the ideal location. And for under the skin, you could even branch out a little bit further, but preferably in this area, subcutaneous under the skin. Another good location for subcutaneous that's acceptable for beef quality assurance is going to be turned into this elbow pocket right here. Okay. Okay. This, this area right here. And actually for a, a clostridial or black leg vaccination, that's going to be your ideal location because those products, the clostridial products, are notorious for producing a knot. And that's just the typical response from being vaccinated with that. If you put them in here, if there is a knot, you don't notice it at all because it's in this, this area behind the elbow and it's not noticeable and the judge will never see it. So this is a good spot for subcutaneous only, especially for the clostridial uh, vaccination because if you get a knot, it's not going to be noticeable. Good skin right there, you can give that injection. You have to be careful because that skin is very thin under there. In a tendency, you can just go through the layers of skin and squirt it out on the ground. So subcutaneous here and here, intramuscular in the muscle is going to be into this defined triangle area right here.